Hey everyone, welcome to this video. Today we're gonna do interactive art wall piece. Uh, I don't know how to describe it, but I can see it in the museums or exhibitions. And it's that type of wall art that you can see on a kind of banded display. So these kind of L-shaped displays. Uh, so I wanted to create something like that. After a long time, we're using X particles and especially the new Nexus edition. It's a very simple project where we're using just turbulence and, and, and extract. So I think you will like this one. And you can download all the project files on my Gumroad for free, just so you can quickly dial in numbers and maybe find your own looks that, that you enjoy. So let's get into it. This is the project file and I'm going to be uh, using it to reference some of the numbers that we used here for like a turbulence and we'll get that exactly. Well, as you can see, it's just emitter, two turbulences and extract and I use NX kill to kill all the particles that uh, are around that rock. So I'm just killing them at the bird. So only born particles will get while the rock is there, no particles being born in this area. I'm still yet to perfect that. But if we go here, I'm just going to start from scratch so we need xp emitter you can find this in inside him just go x particles take these menus out and you can put them on the side so uh we can stretch that a little bit and press play if we go to object go z minus so we can facing the camera we're going to use first turbulence and the first turbulence will be quite small just 25 percent and it will be i think it was voronoi so if we're going to go this one, 20% Voronoi strength 50, strength 50, um, 20%. So it's quite a lot. You see, <laughs> like we can't see actually anything properly. And then there's another turbulence that is 250. That's the large one. And the strength was 20. 20 exactly so these two turbulences one of them is uh, doing the big waves and then the other one is doing the small waves in between so that's how you achieve this just kind of complex movement and the next thing is to increase the particle count to like 6,000 just so we see movement better right and now an extract they, they will come and I will see that we change it to ethanol and it won't go that wild anymore and if we use the drag coefficient of a saloon car which is not moving at all then we start to see that we get that kind of slower movement and we're getting somewhere closer to our example one of the things that needs to be done it needs to be uh, the lifespan of the particle needs to be changed to like something like 25 so they will only last 25 frames and then they will disappear so you see those this is gonna and now you're getting that movement now we can increase the particle count even further once we confident on that look and we starting to get that movement in there and now it's just playing with those uh, turbulences if i look back to the the Voronois, so it's Voronois 51, 20 percent, 75, and then I go here. Oh, I didn't change the. That's a Voronois. That was the thing, and this one was turbulence. And now we can increase the multiplier on that and extract, and it will slow it down even further, which will create this moving. And I can use it as like a wall of art, and I really like this. Um, because the more particles you add, if you go to like 50,000, you know, you, you certainly see that pattern of that turbulence, 75,000. It's amazing that we can do that. Now, when it comes to texturing Redshift, uh, we can, uh, what I did there, I was just uh, using simple sphere. So one, one, one uh, like that, then another one with only six segments so it's almost like um, like a crystal then I used um, we can use tube actually never used one tube as a particle you can reduce the segments height segments too so you try to keep these shapes as, as simple as possible and and this will give you the, the you know the 
the variety in particles just so they don't look like spheres. Like uh, I think it gets boring pretty quickly if, if you only use spheres. Uh, so I usually prepare like four particles like that. Um, what, what else we can do? Pyramid. And then I make them smaller. I think it's super necessary to make them ultra small because you can control them with uh, particle object tag. So we have those four particles and now I'm going to create on the emitter render tag redshift object and add custom objects. And we add this to our emitter. So we highlight uh, all the particles, click on the redshift object tag and drag these particles onto there. Now it's those uh, parts. So if I turn on the redshift, you see it's crazy, but you look in a scale multiplier, you go 0 0.02, and then you get these particles just pretty nice and neat. Now you see all the particles are kind of facing same direction. They're always pointed upwards and they, they, they in this kind of movement, but they don't follow that movement. So I think what you can do is to, um, use the extended data, go use rotation, and you can put 360 there, 360, 360, and it will rotate. If I stop it, oh, it doesn't. So 360 and variation 360. Okay, now it's moving. Okay, and now we're getting that that random look. So each particle has like each own rotation. So it's it's kind of randomized, and you're suddenly getting much better look. You see, we can't see those particles because they are now used by this redshift object tag. So they no longer visible. What you can do, you can just disable them in a viewport where you're not going to see them. They're still being used. Um, so when it comes to texturing, it's really easy now because you can create simple standard material. So you go to material standard and click on a shader graph. And let's say we're going to just go simple. And we're going to use this purple and maybe make the pyramid purple. And then simply you can just create four different versions of materials, change the colors, uh, however you like, drag it tube, make this one blue. I can make this one white, just kind of off white, right? So we get this nice color. And the last thing you would like to do is the plane large plane and then rotate it, hold control, hold shift, 90 degrees, press E, move it like that. And we move that emitter as well, a little bit high up on the wall, closer to that wall. That's awesome. And now we can add just some kind of dome light and we have a art on the wall. I'm just going to change my render settings to final 16 by nine, just so I see. Maybe we can make it a little bit less uh, on the white side. Uh, so object reset. Okay, turn off this one. I'm going to zone in on this, right? Yes, I think it's starting to look pretty nice. We can still increase the particle for final render. Like for now, I would still use OSE within this range where it runs uh, pretty smooth. But then for your final render, like feel free to increase particles to like two millions, uh, you know, one million. And so you get that mass moving. You can always reference that by still image and, and, and look if it, if that looks all right to you. So we covered actual uh, redshift, how we apply materials to those. So it's very simple because we use custom objects. We apply materials uh, directly to the to those objects. Now you saw me using a rock that will basically go through these. So if I'm, if I'm just going to show you with the sphere, I'll take the sphere, make it really small and then apply inside you collider, right? And then move that sphere to that wall. I can move the particles. They only live 25 frames or so. So they only get like, I can only create this kind of it's pretty cool effect when you can just like a dry ball. I was even thinking to, to make it off, but then it came to me that I can just go to bridge, call some rocks to the game later. So 
let's use one of the that I just downloaded yesterday, Sandstone Boulder, straight in. And now it's too complex to run on a simulation and it's probably it's probably fine, but still feels too too complex. So uh, what you can do in the in the sense where you're trying to simplify uh, the calculation data. If you use this as it is, it's a lot of calculation data because all those uh, polygons are facing different uh, directions and it's a lot of calculations, especially if you have million particles here. Um, then what you can do, you can take this rock and put it in remake and create the kind of placeholder copy for simulations. So it will be they will be directly you know, you see this one. So I'll copy that one over and actually I'll delete this remesh. I'll just have two rocks. One, the remesh version. So I'm just going to turn off this one for now. And we look at the remesh and make it as simple as possible. Right? Something like this. So we have a nice quadrangle remesh of that rock. And I can apply the collider to that remesh. So take this out apply the collider to it. We don't need even material on it because we're not going to use it for, for any, uh, it's not going to be visible. We can delete all this. So we have the original rock that basically covers and we can turn off in the render view and, and maybe even in the, and we call it, we call it placeholder and we put them together in a null. So we call it rock, then move this null. So we move both rocks at the same time always because we have the, the tag here it will do the same thing as I can scale it and it will do the same thing as the sphere did. So if I look at this now and move the rock, it works so quick. It just uses our placeholder instead of the, the complex mesh. And this is a technique I wanted to show you. Maybe it's not so, uh, not so necessary in this case, but it's a very useful technique when you are simulating, you know, complex stuff and you want to, you want to, simplify and use placeholders like that or proxies uh, i don't know how, how would i call it so and then simple what i did is the putting render tag i mean the i put vibrate tag on it and enable position change the frequency to like 0 0.2 and increase that look and now rotation 0 0.2 and now we get something even wilder which is something i should have done which i will do still okay And this is it, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, you can download the files. I will uh, will keep both of the files available uh, on Gumroad for free to download. Yeah.